In this lesson of pressure, we are going to introduce you to manometer to measure gas pressure. These are learner's outcome, and these are some of prior knowledge. This is a diagram of manometer. It's another device to measure gas pressure. So we are supposed to measure this gas pressure. Similar to barometer, it actually measures gas pressure by the height of the liquid column. So something along like this. But what is the difference between a barometer and a manometer? A basic barometer is just a U-tube filled with some liquid and is connected to two sources of gas pressure. So you have two sources of gas pressure, PA and PB. And unlike barometer, uh, manometer actually do not uh, measure pressure directly. Instead, it actually compares the difference between the pressure between these two arms. So that means that it actually subtract, find out what is the difference between PA and PB. But if you know the pressure value of one of the side, you will know the value of the other side by knowing the difference. So usually the value that is known is the atmospheric pressure. So you expose one end to the open air, which is the atmospheric pressure. Let's do a comparison. Okay, you find that by looking at this diagram or this configuration, you find that the pressure of gas A is actually equal to pressure of gas B as the pressure actually pressed down equally. So therefore they are level. If pressure of gas A is bigger, okay, bigger than gas B, you find that it's able to press down stronger and push up on the other level. So right now this is the new level. And if you compare these two levels, that's the height difference between uh, pressure A and pressure B. Similarly, if pressure B is actually bigger than pressure A, so you find that it's able to push down more and you create a height difference between level B and level A. So this is the height. And this height, uh, whether it's big or small, will indicate the difference between pressure A and pressure B. So looking at one of the situation where pressure B is greater than pressure A, so this was what we, this was described, and this is the height. You find that the difference in the pressure of the gas is exactly equals to the pressure exerted by the height of the liquid column indicated. So the pressure of the liquid is actually equals to height times the density times the G over here. Okay, so that's what we have. Pressure of the liquid of height H is equal to the difference in terms of pressure of gas B and gas A, which means that gas B subtract gas A. So this is uh, just rewritten. By rearranging, actually we have the pressure of gas B is equal to pressure of gas A. Okay, we'll bring over, add up with the pressure of the liquid of height H. So what does it mean? It means that the uh, pressure of gas B is actually, or uh, the pressure over here, is actually equivalent to the pressure that's uh, over at this level. And this is actually comprised of two parts. One is the pressure of the gas A pressing down on the liquid and the pressure of the liquid pressing down on this level. So this is actually what it meant. So if we know the value of the pressure of gas A, okay, we will be able to know the value of the pressure of gas B. So if we know this, Okay, and we know the difference between this, we will be able to find out the pressure of gas B. So as mentioned before, we usually set one side of the manometer to open air so that the value of the pressure of the gas A is atmospheric pressure, which is generally 76 centimeter Hg. So this is a simple example. The figures show a mercury manometer and what we want to do is to find out the pressure of gas X over here in centimeter Hg or in Pascal. So if we assume that atmospheric pressure is 76 centimeter Hg, by looking at the diagram, we know that gas X is actually stronger pressure than the atmospheric pressure. So this is atmospheric pressure. And how much stronger is that the pressure of gas X is actually over here, which is equals to, this is actually 76 centimeter Hg plus another 15 centimeter of mercury. So therefore it is 91 centimeter mercury. And we want to find in Pascal, what we need to do is to just convert the pressure of gas X by uh, knowing that it is equivalent to 91 centimeter Hg. So by substituting the value in, you find that you will obtain the value of the gas pressure over here in Pascal. Similarly, if we have this gas Z, we want to find in terms of centimeter Hg in Pascal. In this case, by looking at the diagram, gas Z is having have a lower than atmospheric pressure since this one is actually able to press down 
harder. And by looking at the same idea, you find that in this case you have to subtract because gas z plus 5 centimeter is equivalent to 76. So therefore you have to subtract. So in this case, this is just 71 centimeter hg. And similarly, if you want to find Pascal, you just only need to substitute in the numbers at 0 0.71, multiply the density of the mercury, multiply 10, you obtain this value. But what if the liquid is actually not mercury? You find that you run into each this issue. If this is not mercury, we have, we have to first convert all the pressure unit to Pascal before we add or subtract the pressure. So if we use the exact same diagram, but the liquid is actually water, you find that the pressure exerted by water, you have to find this out first. So it is 0 0.15 multiplied by density of water, G. So you have this number. And you also convert atmospheric pressure into Pascal. And you have this number. And the pressure of gas X will be equivalent to the addition of this uh, number and this number. But you have to, like I mentioned, you have to first convert into Pascal before you add. Okay, you cannot just directly add another 15 centimeter. So this would be the final answer. In both situations, uh, you find that the level of liquid column is 15 centimeter. However, the pressure difference is much lesser between the liquid. Uh, but that's the advantage of using water instead of mercury. Because if there's actually a small difference between the pressure of the gas, the water in the manometer can actually show the difference more easily or more obviously. Okay, for example, if the difference of the gas pressure is actually 2000 Pascal, you find that if you use water, the pressure difference is equal to pressure exerted by liquid, and you substitute in the density of uh, water, and you find that the height of the water column, or uh, the difference will show up to be 20. But if you use mercury, you find that the pressure exerted by the liquid is actually uh, using the same numbers, but this, in this case, the density is mercury, you find that would be only 1.5 centimeter. So the same pressure difference would cause this column to have 20 centimeter of difference, but the same you only cost only about 1.5 centimeter. So this one show up more obviously or easier to measure. So what if there are two types of liquid in the uh, manometer, like something like this? You find that actually your examiner actually wants to um, stretch you. The process is actually more tedious, but it actually still follows the same principle. The principle is that the difference between the pressure of gas A and gas B is still equals to the height of the liquid column. Except that this time round, the height is divided into part H1 and H2. Okay, let's use section number to help you to understand. So you find that in this case, this 5 this 8. So arm A is open to atmospheric pressure. We want to find the gas or pressure of gas B. So assume that the blue liquid is water and the gray liquid is to mercury. So the total exert pressure exerted by the liquid column is simply the pressure exerted by the water and pressure exerted by the mercury. And you substitute in its various H1 and H2 and density 1 and density 2. So by substituting in these numbers, you find that this is would be the total uh, pressure exerted by the liquid column. And if you want to find the pressure of gas B, is simply the pressure of gas A. Okay, you still remember that this is atmospheric pressure, and this was uh, assumed to be 100 kilopascal, and you find that this would be the total liquid gas pressure of gas B. So let's try this. Okay, so right now it's same as the previous situation, except the arm B is some oil. Okay, over here is oil and find the pressure of gas B if the gas A is actually atmospheric pressure. So again, this exact same situation. And no, okay, gas B is not at atmospheric pressure even though it is the same level, okay? I will leave it for you to do this and you see whether your answer can be, this will be the answer, okay? That will be the end of today's lesson, thank you. Please subscribe and support my channel for my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.